Happy New Year. It is the 6th of January, 2020. Wow. When I was sitting in your seat, I thought the year 2020 was like so far away. By the way, 2020, when I was sitting in your seat, there was going to be flying cars and, um, yeah, I mean, it, things changed a lot, but not as much as they said that it was going to change. So, Happy New Year. Right now, Julia, Johnny, and Sawyer, we're getting back in the groove by doing these six items on page 281 to pick up where we left off. But before we just dive right in, let's get a little practice with something that we left off with. 42 through 47 on page 281. Solving for C, 42. What does C equal? Twenty twenty, the year of the Browns. <laughs> this is next year. We don't even have a coach. You know. We might be better off without a coach. Maybe we should try that. Let's just go no coach this year. Yes. Well, that's why we're not just diving in. No, we're reviewing. We're not starting with something new. It's called combining like terms. And then, listen, ladies and gentlemen, first thing you got to do on number 42 is combine like terms. Then you use the, listen, quit making algebra so complicated. It's two things. Ready? Whatever they do to the letter, the variable, you undo it by doing the opposite. And the second thing is just do it to both sides. If you just keep it that simple, it isn't really that hard. So how are you going to solve for C? The first thing you're going to do is all the C terms, combine them. Okay, then did they attach anything to the C term? Undo it. If they added, subtract. Just make sure you do it to both sides. Did they multiply? Is there a number right next to the C? How do you undo multiplication? Division. Divide. Do it to both sides. Thank you to those out there actually trying to do it. Put it on the board. Instead of just sitting there waiting, instead of sitting there waiting like little flames in the nest, waiting for a worm, little birdies. Hopefully your basketball team is out of that stage. Where you're standing there waiting for a rebound like this. Please come to me. Or the other team gets offensive rebound after offensive rebound after offensive rebound. Because they actually are. Our center don't know how to walk out. All right, here we go. Hopefully you're done with number 47. If you're not, first thing you do is combine like terms. You got a 5C minus a 3C. So we got 2C. Plus 24 equals 2. How do we get rid of 24? We subtract 24. So if I subtract 24 from both sides, I have 2C 
equaling negative 22. How do I get rid of the 2? I divide both sides by 2. Then, my friends, C equals negative 11. You are listening. I went through that rather quickly, but you should be almost the same by now, almost able to do that as quickly as I did. Because, listen, keep it simple. If you just remember these two things, well, three now, because you have to combine like terms. Combine like terms, 5C minus 3C, 2C. What did they do to the C term? They added 24. So what do I got to do? Subtract 24. Second thing is, whatever you do to one side of the equal sign, you got to do to the other. That's it. That's all it is. They still got something attached to the C. It's a 2. What's it mean when they're written right next to each other? That they're multiplying. How do you undo multiplication? Divide. Just do the same on both sides. Boom. Done. Am I right? If I put this negative 11 up here, negative 55 plus 24, negative 33, is that all going to equal 2? I'm sorry, positive 33. Yeah, if you put C, put negative 11 up in there for your Cs, it's going to equal 2. Number 48. I'm sorry, 42. I'm sorry, 43. <laughs> Okay, I'll do 43 next to it. 3 times 2z minus 3. What's the D word I'm looking for? What am I going to do with this 3, Lorelei? Nope. Nope. Oh, I'm going to multiply, but what's the D word I'm looking for? I'm going to distribute the 3 to everything inside the parentheses. Because it's written right outside the parentheses, I mean I'm going to multiply it by this term and then by that term. So 3 times 2z is 6z. 3 times negative 3 is negative 9. Parentheses are gone. Equals 75. No, I'm not doing 3 times 75. That's not in the parentheses. So this is my new line. How do I get rid of the negative 9? It's the same thing over and over. What's the opposite of subtraction? So I'm going to add what? So I'm going to add 9. If I add 9 to both sides... 6z equals 84. How do I get rid of the 6? Do it again. Two steps. Undo what they did by dividing by both sides. Done. Done. You check 14 up here. 28 minus 3 is 25. What's 3 times 25? Boom, 75. Good? 44. I'm going to erase 40. Stop. I know you're saying that because you don't ever want it to end. And don't, listen, since I found out, all I think about is, who's the seventh grader? Losing to Tony. I don't want to hear about it. No. We beat them one time. That's how the other got destroyed. We were just watching here. That's my excuse. No, like, no. Okay, number 40. Whoa. Number 44. Jaden's next line looks like this. 7x 
distribute the negative 2 to the x, minus 2x. Negative 2, oh, this might be the tricky part. Negative 2 times negative 11 plus 22. Everybody focus. Ready? This is a negative 2 outside the parentheses. So when I distribute this 2, it's negative 2 times negative 11 positive 22. This is number 44. All I did on the next line was distribute negative 2 times x, negative 2 times negative 11, positive 22. Now I combine like terms. What's 7x minus 5x? I'm sorry. What's 7x minus 2x? 5x. 5x. Plus 22 equals negative 23. How do I get rid of the positive 22? Subtract 22. If I subtract 22 here, I got to do it over here. That leaves me with 5x equals negative 45. How do I get rid of the 5? Both sides by 5. x equals negative 9. I'm going to agree this is fun. Number 45. <laughs> okay. I have 3B minus 5B gives me a total of negative 2B. How do I get rid of the negative 2? I got to divide by? Negative. Make sure you divide by negative 2 because that's what makes it positive 1. I divide by negative 2, I leave you with 1B. I divide by negative 2. When I divide two negatives, it makes the answer? B equals 7. You like that one. It's less steps. Number 45 is the best thing that's happened to you today, Bella. What? Number 45 is the best thing that's happened so far today. Everybody got this? 44? Number 46. Lorelai, what am I going to do with the 4? I'm going to distribute it through the parentheses. Rachel, how do I get rid of the negative 28? Add 28. Four x equals thirty-two. How do I get rid of the four, Sid? Divide by four. X equals eight. You like that one too? I like that. I like that. I like the other. That's the oh second God. best thing. I only like that one. That one had bread. I only like that one. That one had bread. Dominic, Morning. this is the worst day of your life? It's not no, the worst day of your life. Why? Because you're just coming back to me? 
Yeah. Weren't you excited? I, I'm not joking. I was actually, I think I was making my son mad. I was actually excited last night. Come back. I was so tired. I know. Me too. Last night, I went to bed early because we had pigs and we had cats. And I got one of the ones to head tomorrow morning. I got to bed at 2.30. Three nights. And my sister took some animals and put the light on my finger. Okay, now what? Somebody raise their hand. Tell me what I should do. Remember, my goal is to get down here where y equals something. Right now, we've got y plus 3 divided by 5. What do you think, Jaden? No. No y. Good, good thinking, but I know what y is. I don't, I don't want to know what y is. I want to know how we get there, Zacchaeus. Dominic. I'm going to multiply both sides by 5 first. Because if I multiply by 5 over 1, look what happens. That leaves me with just y plus 3 over here. Multiply both sides by 5. And now I got 50. Everybody catch that? I got rid of my fraction by multiplying by 5 because they cancel each other. And now it just leaves me with y plus 3 over 1, y plus 3. Both sides. Now, how, how do I get rid of the 3? Subtract 3. See, that one looked way more complicated, yeah, but it really saying, wasn't. That's favorite. That's, I can do that looked more complicated because they threw that fraction in there. But you guys are wise to them now. You can undo. You can get rid of a fraction by multiplying by the denominator. You see that? Whatever that denominator is, if you multiply by that, they cross cancel each other. Oh, yeah. Good. Great. Yeah. There you go. That's your warm up. Oh, and now uh, for something. Who's doing more? Okay. Yeah. Page two eighty two and two eighty three. Solving uh, equations that have fractions and decimals in them. We are going to eliminate. Fractions and decimals, similar to what we did here. We don't have to deal with fractions. We can uh, multiply and get rid of those. And decimals as well. Okay, page 283. As usual, we dive right in. We've got the examples, two and three, to help us. If we should need it, go down to your turn now, and we're going to work through number two. We're on page 283, number... Two. Two eighty three, number two. Negative one point seven K. Okay, I'm going to eliminate decimals. How could I eliminate decimals from this problem? Somebody want to offer a suggestion before I tell you? Nope. I can make this problem, I can make the decimals disappear. I, want to, I don't want to give it to you if someone knows already what I'm going to say. What do you think, Noah? Um, U minus 1.7K. No, 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 you're, okay, you're thinking that because you're like, oh, six, I'm going to combine like terms. That's true, and that'll eliminate the decimal on this side, but it doesn't eliminate all the decimals. I want to be able to do a problem free of decimals or fractions. How can I eliminate decimals from everything? What's that called? Okay, what, after all these years of math, and Mr. Franken emphasizing this year that you have, you've been writing the equal signs like you don't even realize you're writing it. It means something. If you treat everything equally, the whole thing's still going to be equal. 
as long as you treat everything equally. So what could I do to everything in this problem to eliminate the decimals? I don't want to deal with decimals. Kira. No. In stereo. Dominic and David, go ahead, both of you. They said different things, but they said the same thing. He said move the decimal point over. He said multiply by 10. You know how you move the decimal point over? You multiply by 10. Watch. Think about this. If I took this problem and I multiplied everything in it by 10. Dina, do you remember back in fifth grade when we did this and I said, you better never write this again in your life, 1.7 times 10, because whenever you multiply by 10, all you're doing is moving the decimal point one place to the right, and you multiply. Okay, I know. So, we're multiplying everything by 10. This is our new problem. Negative 17K plus 67K equals 131. I'm stopping there. Raise your hand if you need more clarification. How did I get rid of the decimals? I multiplied everything by 10 because I noticed that everything was had a tenths place. So I can get rid of it by multiplying everything by 10. Absorb that. Think. Well, we'll get to that. Because if one of these ones is in the hundreds, I'd have to multiply everything by 100. That's all. Okay. So I multiplied everything by 10. Now... We're back to what we warmed up with today. We're going to combine like terms. What's positive 67 and negative 17? Combining these two terms. They're both K terms. How many Ks do I have now? David. 50. Everybody see that? 67 and negative 17. 50K equals 131. How do I get rid of the 50? If I divide this by 50, that leaves me, okay, now I'm going to know what K equals. 131 divided by 50. I go off to the side, I do 131 divided by 50, I get 2.62 or 2 and 31 fiftieths. Since the problem was given to us in decimals, we're supposed to give them the answer in decimal. Does, anybody, does everybody see how I got from here to here? Probably not. 131 divided by 50. Done. Everybody see that? 131 divided by 50, I do the math at 2.62. That is number two on page 283. Raise your hand if you don't get it. I'll go back through it more slowly. Everything all right, Isaac? No, I'm not. I'm not. It's okay. Sinuses. It's going to be okay. It's you were going to sneeze and it didn't come, so now your eyes are watering. Yes. And now they all You look at the light. I feel bad because there's nothing worse than a good sneeze coming and then you don't get it. What? There's nothing worse than feeling a good sneeze coming and then you don't get to experience it. Yeah. Am I the only one that loves sneeze? Yes. No, I don't know. Well, you look at me. You look at me. You look at me. Well, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. No, but if you the sneeze is coming, it's not quite. If you look at the light, oh. sometimes it'll. Yeah. All right. Awesome. Listen, raise your hand. Seth, does this make sense? Dina? First thing I did was get rid of the decimals. I don't want to deal with decimals, so I multiplied everything by 10. Why? Because I noticed that if I multiply everything by 10, all the decimals disappear. And it's okay to do that because as long as I treat everything equally, everything stays equal. Now I've got combined my like terms. 
divide by 50 because they multiplied by 50. Both sides, 2.62. Number three. See if you can be done with three before me. Let's see. Shall we? Let's go, Zacchaeus. 1.2n minus 0.2. Okay, this one's going to be a little more complicated. 1.2n minus 2.2. Uh oh. If the first thing I want to do is get rid of the decimals, what am I going to multiply everything by? Be careful. 100. Who thinks I'm going to multiply everything by 100? Who thinks I should only multiply everything by 10? Listen. Look, Brett. If I multiply everything by 10, beautiful. That decimal point's gone. Beautiful. That decimal point's gone. But if I multiply everything by 10, uh-oh, that decimal point's still there. How can I eliminate all decimals multiplied by... What if I move it two places? That's the same as multiplying by 100. So if I move everything two places, I'm not going to have 12N. I'm going to have... 120 n. I'm getting rid of the decimal, multiplying everything by 100. That becomes 24, and this becomes 70 n. Okay, still looks tricky because I got variables on both sides of the equation. You're still using the same principles. There's two things, people. Well, there's three things. Combine like terms, and then whatever they do to the letter, to the variable, you undo it by doing the opposite. Just make sure you do the same thing to both sides. I don't want a variable on both sides. i got to get them on one side. So I'm going to eliminate the 70N. How do I get rid of 70N on the right? Right now, there's 70N there. How do I get rid of it? No, not divide by 70N. That's going to give me one. Listen. That's a good try, but listen, if I divide by 70n, what am I going to have over here? I'm going to have 1. That's not going to really help me. I'm going to subtract 70n. Watch. If I get rid of the 70n over here, that leaves me with 0. Okay. And if I subtract 70n over here, stop right there. What have I done? I've done what I've always done. I've treated both sides the same. I subtracted 70n on this on this side of the equal sign, and I'm subtracting 70n over here. Which 120 minus 70? 50n minus 24. Okay. And now there's zero over here. That's all right. David. There isn't zero. Because I had 120n minus 70n. Now I got 50n. Okay? How do I get rid of the 24? You add 24. Add 24. 50N equals 24. How do I get rid of the 50? Divide by 50. Fractions don't scare Fractions are people. Fractions are numbers too. They don't scare you anymore. N equals 24 divided by 50 which is 12 25ths. They gave us the problem in decimals. We're supposed to give them the answer in decimal. So n equals 0. 0.48. Does everybody understand? 12 25ths is 0. 0.48. There's two ways you can go about that. You can go over here to the side and do 12 divided by 25 or you could use math sets that you've been building over all these years, and you can think 12 25ths would be, if I multiply them both by 4, that would give me 4,800. Boom. 4,800s. How many people did that as opposed to this? Listen, you got to start thinking like this. 
Don't. You got this. Math is with you whether you like it or not. If you're in seventh grade, eighth grade, ninth grade, tenth grade, at least eleventh grade. So, <laughs> so listen. Start trying to think more. Try to build your math sense. When I look at 12 25ths, I immediately think of, oh, that easily makes something over 100. And when I see 48 hundredths, I know it's written like that. That saves me from having to do this division. Does that make sense? Just like learning 6 times 9 was 54 back in third grade sure helped when you had to do all that division in fourth and fifth grade. Because if you're sitting there trying to do long division, already you're upset because you got to do all these steps, right? And now, if you don't know what 6 times 9 is like that, that, that's a nightmare. So the more mental math you can do, the better off you're going to be. 12 25ths. You need to get to a place where you can look at that and go, oh, that's 48 hundredths. Because you can multiply 25 times 4 easily in your head to get 100. 12 times 4 easily in your head, 48. Boom, boom. If you're not there, don't think, well, that's just not me. I'm not. You can develop that skill. Yes. That's number three on page 283. Number four. Anybody down with four yet? No. Just waiting for me to do it. Did you do four yet, David? No. Well, let's do it before I do. Uh, but looking at the clock. No. Think to yourself. There's no place I'd rather be than no. right here. Oh, right now. Oh, oh, I have a lot of places. Hey, Jonathan at least yes, entertained it for a second for me. He's like, oh, no. <laughs> We dismissed it kind of quickly. Wait, what is it? 8.3 minus 8y. Yeah. Okay, here we go. I have a tenth here and a tenth here. Who's going to multiply by a hundred? That's that's what we call, you know this vocab term, ready? Mm -hmm. Multiplying by 100 will, would be superfluous. How many have ever heard that word before? Superfluous. That would be overdoing it. You don't have. You could multiply by 100 if you want and make the numbers better. You could multiply by a million if you want. But why? All you have to do is multiply by 10. Multiply everything by 10 and watch what happens. Decimals disappear. 83 minus 80y equals 12y plus 60. Look up here. All I did from the original problem to this is I multiplied everything by 10. And if I multiply everything by 10, the integrity of the equal sign still it maintains it's still the same. It's still equal. I've just made everything proportionally bigger. It makes total mathematical sense. Everybody with me? Yeah. We're looking at the clock. So now I've got like terms again, and uh-oh, I've got a variable on both sides. That's no good. I need to know what y equals. Well, I can't have y equals. I need the y's on the same side. Okay, here's where you got to make a decision. Most of the time we have worked with the variable always on the left, and it's equal to something. Does it matter if the variable is on the left or the right? People, please stay with me three more minutes. Does it matter which side the variable is on? For instance, what's the difference in these two things? There is not. Y equals 6, 6 equals Y. It's the same thing. What side do you think I'm going to move my Y's to? Left. left. No, nope, right. I'm not. Right. Right. You know why I'm going to move them to the right? Because the other thing I like working with is positive numbers. Because I'm going to want to know what positive y equals in the end, right? 
set, stay with me here. I have a negative 80y and a positive 12y. If I was to subtract 12y from here, I'd have, to, I'd have negative 92y. I can add 80y, watch this. I can add 80y to both sides. And my new equation is going to be 83 equals 92y plus 60. I'll stop there. What did I do? I did the same thing to both sides of the equation, and I fixed it so the y is only on one side. Listen, algebra, what do you do? You combine like terms. You undo things by adding, subtracting, multiplying, or dividing, as long as you do it to both sides. Look, by doing this, I've got my y on one side now. That's what I need to have. You're not all paying attention. Quit looking at the clock. Quit thinking about anything else. How did I get the y's on the same side? Does this make sense? That I could add 80y and yes. eliminate the y over here? Does that make sense? Yes. Negative 80y plus 80y, y's are gone. That's zero. They eliminate each other. If I did that to one side of the equal sign, do I have to do it to the other? Yes. What's 80 plus 12? 92y. How do I get rid of the 60? Subtract 60 from both sides. 23 equals 92y. How do I get rid of the 92? Divide by 92. I've got just y over here. Beautiful. That's what I wanted. I want to know what y equals. If I divide this by 92, I go off to the side. I do 23 divided by 92. I get 0.25. Now, when I talked about math sense, I noticed that that was one fourth. You should be there. But again, the more mental math you can do, if you could recognize this as one fourth, you won't have to do this. I don't want to do that either. So I commit as much as I can, just like my math facts, to mental math so I can say, oh, that's one fourth. Boom. What's one fourth is decimal? 0.25. No homework. Yeah. Happy New Year. Jesus. My last gift of the year. Uh, first. Hey. Wait, where are you guys going? Why are you You Okay, stop making your zeros half the size of your eight. It's killing me. She thought no. she goes, oh, she goes, it's like she goes eight. Oh, I got eight. <laughs> I had a choir. Ah. Sorry.